Hey, we're Loz and Alex, and this is our van, Marty. It's a 89 VW T3 Synchro. So that means he's a four-wheel drive, so he loves dirt roads. But it also loves the mechanic. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> We've been living um, off and on for the last two years in Marty and have just moved in full time about six months ago. Um, and we're trying to get around Australia and also run our business from the road. Yeah, so let's take a look inside. So I'm going to show you my favourite part of the van, which is the kitchen. So if I lift this up, this is where the gas cooker is. And then you can pull this out to get to all of the storage underneath. Originally it was just a cupboard, um, but then Alex had the idea of putting this on, on slides so you could bring it out and it makes it so much easier. So if we shut that, I'll show you where the cupboard is. So you can also go in this way if you just want to quickly get something out without opening the top. And then we also decided to use like a, a quite a rough wood so that we could use all of our bench tops as um, chopping boards and make them look more rusty because they get a bit older. The restoration started as a paint job. That was the brief to my mechanic. Started as a paint job, just a quick paint job, easy as in and out, couple of weeks. <laughs> Six months later, it was still in the shop. But we... Did everything. Did yeah, we, once we it. started, mm. it was hard to figure out where to stop. Like, well, we started with them one month. Crazy. We're like, well, let's just like fix a few things. We'll give ourselves a month and then we'll jump on the road. So we moved out of our house in November yeah. to renovate the van for a month. And then it, we didn't actually move into it till May. We just got to a point where we're like, wow, this is taking a lot longer than we ever imagined. But when it got to that point, we're like, we've committed so much, we just have oh, to finish yeah. now. So it just kept By that going stage, on. everything had come out, the dash had come out, I'd stripped back the inside, I'd yeah. sanded everything, all the awning and the canvas was pulled out. The, it was the literally. Whole, the van was a shell, like the, it was a complete shell. I didn't work on the van quite as much as Alex, so I was still working like on the business more so. And I came in one day and um, I remember thinking, oh, last week Alex said it was going to be finished this week. And I was always like, oh, why is, what? I don't understand. And then I came in one day and I literally watched him like, th both of them try to put this bolt in for like four hours. And I'm like, holy shit, this is why it's taking so long. And they're like, yeah, you, you don't know, but like one day a bolt might take four hours. I loved it. Yeah. Well, it was one of the best things I've ever done. Like, it, it's one of the hardest things I've ever done, but if we had planned it a bit better... We probably wouldn't have done it if we planned it better, though. We would have been like, no way, we're spending that amount of time on a van rebuild. Oh, my God. What do you think, Oz? It's perfect. Oh, my God, it's so perfect. Uh, and then over here, we have our sink. The water comes in under here, where we've also got a filter. Um, funny story, uh, we actually have only just had water for the last six months. About two years ago, we lent our van to a friend who accidentally filled the water tank up with petrol, uh, which was sounds funny, but was really annoying. So we've only just got water back, which is really nice to have. Um, and then next to that is this little bit here, so a little hidden section where all of our knives and forks are. Uh, and this is our fridge, which again is hidden to look a bit prettier. Um, so we made sure that we had a fridge that was big enough so that we only, we could really go off road for a few days without having to go to the shops, um, which meant that we really needed to have a fridge that was this way facing, not like an esky, esky type of fridge. I honestly think it's the best thing we bought that goes in this van. So this is our pantry which is a little fold down cupboard with a nice little leather strap. Um, where we try to make the most um, of our limited space for food and we actually manage to fit everything we need in here. One of the best things about living in the van is that everything kind of has its place. Like you're not living with too much stuff. You really have to think about each object that comes in here and obviously um, it has to be brown. <laughs> <laughs> In our case, it must be a shade of brown. <laughs> Mustard we, we will allow. <laughs> are a little bit obsessed with the segments, <laughs> uh, if you can't tell. <laughs>
Everything needs to have its place. It has to be meaningful. You really value these objects. We've got clothes storage here. We've got um, mine and, and Loz's clothes here. And these are actually removable, so you can, can take them in and out of the cupboard easy enough, and it can still be organised. We have our electronics up the front here. So this is where all our camera and all our computers can live in one spot. So they're neatly organised up the front. We have the under the rock and roller bed here. We have our shoe storage and our camping equipment. So if we want to go on a hike, we grab our backpack, stuff it full of our camp equipment and we're off for a couple of nights. Um, but previously that wasn't very accessible so I actually built this drawer to pull out as a drawer. So just to add a bit more functionality and make it way more accessible. Um, and then we've got the surfboard which is probably one of the biggest things we had trouble with fitting in. We were thinking about doing the roof and having roof racks, but we didn't want to screw into the fiberglass roof at the top. So we kind of ended up racking it in here, aren't we? Yeah, this is the solution we came up with. So I'll show you our favourite feature of the van. Um, this isn't actually an original feature. There was a bit of restoration work done, but when we want to park up and we want to convert this into a lounge space, we use these captains, these fancy captain seat bases. We swivel that seat around and then we unclip this cabinet and pull this out here. And this becomes a coffee table, work desk, whatever you like. So we have a hat brand called Will and Bear that we launched um, about three and a half years ago. All of our team members are kind of all over Australia and the world now. It's like a virtual team, so it's like we have this one task board that we're all in and we chat all the time. We all have our tasks set up, so it's like a really serious organisation has to go into us living yeah. what looks like a carefree van life. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the concept of our brand is to inspire people to get outdoors and the hope that when they're outdoors they'll then respect nature and want to like give back to it. So the whole idea of us being in the van um, really ties into like our ethos through our business as well. So this is my stand-up desk, um, which we have now after we've done the Renault. We were really lucky in the fact that we lived in the van for about a year before we decided to restore it. And we kind of learned the hard way um, what was really not practical work-wise and because we're running the business from the road, we made a really big effort to design it to be really functional this time. So I can work from here, um, or the captain's seat at the front, um, or at the couch at the back. And then in terms of the, the brains of everything, we've got all our sort of electronics set up in here. Um, we've got a 2000 watt inverter. We've got a 4G router. We've got uh, an AGM battery, which powers it all. Um, we've got a 200 watt solar blanket that lives in that cupboard but connects up to this hub and then we run the cord out the window um, when it's sunny. We've got the battery charger which automatically switches between the solar and the um, alternator when you're driving. And then we've got our 240 volt um, power points which we can use our household appliances but mainly we're charging our laptops um, so we can kind of work from anywhere. Once we've parked up and we've popped the roof up, this is our actual um, secondary storage space. We have got a few items stored up here, like the blanket, there's a card table and a couple of stools that live up there permanently while the pop top's down even. Um, but this is a super functional space just to get things out of the way. So if we're traveling during the day or, or just hanging around, we just, and we want to set up fully. Oh, the pillow. Come on. <laughs> we uh, put everything up here and then we end up with a much sort of neater space. So we're sitting on our rock and roll bed. This folds down into a flat mattress and then we've got this additional mattress at the top here. 
We did used to just sleep on this part. Um, we did for ages actually, um, but it proved to be not so comfy and not so great for your back. Um, and then as soon as we decided we were gonna live full time in the van again, we made an investment to get a proper mattress. Yeah, I mean, and the other thing too was the curtains that you don't see up, but we have them magnet on. Um, we were balancing whether we wanted to put curtains up just because we balancing. wanted to... I wanted curtains, Alex didn't want them because he thought they looked ugly, which is uh, true. <laughs> nah, and I wanted to keep the view open, in which you appreciate, um, but they are actually very handy at night. So we do still need them, um, but we just pop them on and off when we do need them. So It was a good compromise. Originally we moved into our van because we loved the adventure and we were really inspired on the road and we found that we kind of, I, I guess, grew the most as humans when we were on the road because we were constantly learning. There's actually so much personal growth that comes from putting yourself in a harder situation. If we can practice living in this tiny space together, it's like we could almost work and live like anywhere. I'm going to pass on a bit of information that one of my friends gave to me and she said that the breakdowns will be the best part of your adventure and she was so right like every time the van has broken down like something amazing has happened or you like you make something amazing happen out of it or you learn from it. So I think everything that's, that you think like you perceive as being a negative turns into a positive in hindsight. We get the upside of surfing most days being by the ocean when we're not, you know, in, in the city. When well, we're not broken down in the middle of Australia, we'd be by the ocean. And we get to see a country that we want to feel a bit more intimate to. Thanks so much for watching the first episode of Home on the Road. Alex and Loz had so much great stuff to say that I couldn't fit into this video, so I've put their full-length interview up on my Patreon page. So be sure to check out the rewards there and consider supporting the channel for as little as a dollar a month. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all in episode two.